Hi, my name is Kyle. And I'm Reggie. And this is the Bi-Weekly Binge. The only show that's getting coal for Christmas. Today's topic is one of magic and wonder, of dreams and imagination, of white beards and a fat man. Yep, that's right. Santa Claus is coming to the binge. This episode, we're going to be talking about the origins of Santa and how this jolly toy maker became a cornerstone of Christmas. So, without further ado, let's jump in. This week's news story is something we've both been waiting for for a very long time. On December 18th, a new cinematic spectacle hits the silver screen. For years, people have been it's waiting- It's Star Wars. It, it's Star Wars. The, the Force Awakens opens up on the 18th, with showings on the 17th at 7 p.m. Yes, it's Star Wars. The movie series that defined my, and hundreds of thousands of other people's childhood, is coming back, and I am beyond excited. This movie has already sold more than $100 million in pre-sale tickets, and is expected to double that on its opening weekend. And, if you're like me, you pre-ordered your tickets three weeks in advance just to make sure you could go and see it. You do realize there's a very good chance that tickets would be sold at the door, right? Can't take that chance, Reggie. And you do realize you'd probably save five, eight dollars on pre-sale. Can't miss the premiere, Reggie. You know that. <sighs> Whatever. In other news, the current drought in California is still very prevalent. And it doesn't really look like it's going to get better anytime soon. However, El Nino is supposed to reach its peak very soon, and California should have a very wet winter. Which should only mean good things. Or so it seems. Unfortunately, California is still in a year's worth of debt from lack of precipitation. Although this upcoming winter will bring plenty of rain and other precipitation, it will only be a drop in the bucket. However, here at the Bi-Weekly Binge, we're feeling the Christmas spirit and in the mood to give. So, Reggie put it upon himself to help out the people of California. Santa Claus. Much like the Halloween episode, we're going to be recounting the history of this Yuletide Joybringer, but we're only going to be focusing on him and the lore around him. I guess a good place to start with him would be what Santa does, but before we do that, Kyle and I take to the streets to ask people where Santa comes from. Where does the legend of Santa Claus come from? Um, somewhere in Europe. Uh, not sure. The North Pole? Obviously, it's like Scotland or something, I don't know. So as we can see, people don't really know the history of Santa Claus. For those of you who lived under a rock that's been at the bottom of the Mariana Trench for your entire lives, Santa Claus is the joyous gift giver that comes to your house while you're sleeping and leaves you presents. The utmost expert of reverse burglaring, Santa's been delivering gifts to kids for centuries, though under several different pseudonyms. Santa's history begins in the 4th century with the Greek Christian bishop, St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas was known to be very generous and devoted most of his life to helping the poor. While he was alive, he would put coins in the shoes of people who left him out for him. This spawned a tradition of gift giving in a similar fashion during the Middle Ages. During the Middle Ages, on December 6th, people would put out their shoes in hopes that St. Nicholas would give them candy. This tradition still exists today, however it's not very common. December 6th was also a day for feasting, and in England around the 16th century, it was moved to December 25th to coincide with Christmas. Along with this move, a new figure came into popular lore, Father Christmas. Father Christmas was depicted as a large man wearing green robes and having a beard. He was thought to be the spirit of goodwill and Christmas. He was popularized in Charles Dickens' 1843 work, A Christmas Carol, as the ghost of Christmas present, where he showed Scrooge the sad, depressing Christmases of his poor employees. So the gift giving comes from St. Nicholas, and the beard and robes comes from Father Christmas. These two are known to be the two main influence on modern Santa. But there is one that stands out from the rest. The Norse god Odin inspired the flying and the whole chimneys thing. In the Norse legend, Odin would lead ghosts on a parade through the sky. While he was uh, doing this, he would stop at people's houses and enter through the chimneys and leave them gifts. 
That's the very simplified version, but it's true. Now that we've covered Santa's roots, let's look at how he became the Santa that we all know and love today. Around 1821, a book was published containing the anonymous poem, Santa Claus, which described an old man bringing children presents in a sleigh pulled by reindeer. Then, in 1823, the night before Christmas was published. This tale became incredibly popular, and the idea of Santa Claus popularized and spread across the world. It wasn't until 1863 that the permanent image of Santa was painted in our minds. Thomas Nast published a picture of Santa Claus on January 3rd, 1863, and it pictured a chubby man with a white beard and a red suit smoking a pipe and carrying a bag full of toys. He's also credited with making up the location of the home of this Yuletide hero. As the 1800s turned to the 1900s, everybody had caught the Santa fever, children were infatuated with the joyful toy maker, and adults liked the idea too. From then on, Santa only gained more and more popularity, and has continued to grow and evolve into the Santa Claus that we all know and love today. It's clear to see that Santa has a long history and origin story, but why is it that we love Santa so much? Every year we roll out our Santa lawn blow-ups, and our Santa cookie cutouts, and our Santa lights, and our Santa beards, but why? In our view? It's because Santa is a positive figure for good. He, much like Father Christmas, is the physical embodiment of all the good things that the Christmas season has to offer. He's kind. He promotes peace. He's joyous. He's caring. And he promotes giving. All the things that make the Christmas season a wonderful and happy time are embodied by the red-suited, white-bearded North Pole Dweller. In the end, although Santa's history is very interesting and not a lot of us know about it, it ultimately doesn't matter. Because Santa is one of the many byproducts of this most wonderful time of year. Let's talk logistics for a second. Any other time a bearded fat man breaks into your house, you can press charges. It really is just a silly legend that evolved over time. So it doesn't really matter if you believe in Santa. Or you don't believe in Santa. Or if you think Santa is just something that strays away from the true meaning of Christmas. Or if you think the opposite. Ultimately, Christmas is what you make of it. In the end, it doesn't really matter what you celebrate. As long as you take advantage of the time of year to spend time with your family, friends, and anyone else who loves you. It's far more important to show these people generosity, compassion, and selflessness. That's the true meaning of Santa Claus, or Christmas, or anything else you can possibly celebrate or think of this winter season. Well, that's our show for the week. Be sure to check us out on thesquall.com. And as always, my name is Kyle. My name is Reggie. Merry Christmas. And this is The, the Bi-Weekly Weekly Binge. I want Santa to be so real. Yeah.